Minecraft. What's up, Doc? Is <laughs> something you might be wondering? Asking Dr. Brian Lorgon 111 why we're starting on this screen again? And it's for two reasons. One is I was reminiscing about how I used to start all of my videos with Minecraft after the final episode of Surviving Minecraft Island, where uh, Darkfan happened to mention that. But the other reason is I've been doing some off camera work in my Quest for Everything world and it had just turned a thunderstorm. I just heard the first lightning bolt and I immediately saved and exited. And so we're gonna go back in, it's nighttime, but I do have a looting sword on me in case we see any chainmail guys. But what I really wanna do is see if we can get lucky and find any electrified creepers. And I don't remember which horse is which. I'm gonna get this horse because I think he's somewhat fast. Um, he's okay. I think the sun is about to come up shortly. But basically, I did not see where the lightning bolt was last time, but hopefully we'll get a few more lightning bolts. And with all the creepers who are out here on the plains, maybe get lucky and uh, get one of them hit by lightning so we can just finally go after some mob heads. But the off-camera work that I've been doing is to prepare for another dragon fight to do a little bit more dragon science and just kind of like playing around with what we can do to kill the dragon quickly. And I think there was one other thing as well. Oh yeah, I've been doing some fishing off camera. So I was kind of playing around with that a little bit. Oh, hey, uh, okay. That's not the type of lightning strike that I really wanted. Um, but we got another <laughs> skeleton trap. They seem to be quite common. Can I just hold my shield? I never thought about this. I can just like hold down right click and hold my shield to block while I'm riding on the horse. Might be a smart thing to do. Although the arrow can bounce into the horse then. So I guess there's a little bit of trade off there. In any case, that hadn't really occurred to me before, so that's that's thing. <laughs> uh, all right, I don't know if this is going to pan out at all. I will bring you guys back if something exciting happens with lightning bolts. Hey, Boots Patrol! I see chainmail boots. I want them. Gimme, gimme, gimme. You, sir, give me your boots. Did he drop them? I don't think he did. Darn it. <laughs> Ah, uh, all right, I tried. Um, oh, I did not see where that lightning strike was, sadly. All right, let's just get back on the horse. Uh, I don't need to fight every enemy I see. Just the ones wearing chainmail boots, because we're on boots patrol. And yeah, I have no idea where that lightning strike was. I was thinking about, I was gathering up a little bit more nether rack in case I really wanted to turn this into like a giant nether rack spot so I'd be able to see where every lightning bolt struck because it would leave the land on fire. And I, I was also looking if I wanted to make kind of a more traditional farm for electrified creepers. I guess you would name tag them so they wouldn't despawn. I only have five name tags so far. That was one of the reasons I was starting to fish uh, and playing around with fishing a little bit more. Oh, there's, okay, there's a lightning strike that I actually saw. Is there anybody there, though? I don't think there is. Darn, no creepers happen to be standing here at that moment, but at least I saw another lightning strike. That's, that's something. I should note, sometimes it can be t hard to tell if it's still a thunderstorm or whether it's just raining. Uh, I still see mobs spawning, and it's now daytime. I actually, I have a clock in my inventory. Um, can I show you real quick? Yeah, it's the middle of the day, uh, but there's still mobs spawning. Like, I've seen them spawning out in front of me out here. And they can do that during a thunderstorm. They cannot do that when it's just raining during the daytime, I believe. I believe if it's just raining during the daytime, the light level... I think, actually, even during a thunderstorm during the daytime, the light level is actually... Like, it looks reasonably bright out. The light level's like 8 or 9 or something like that. But mob spawning behaves during a thunderstorm as though the light level were light level 4 or something. Uh, I don't remember the fine details, but basically, so long as I still see fresh mobs spawning out here during the daytime, I know it's still technically a thunderstorm, and so we might see another lightning strike. Look at all the creepers. They're all standing in the spot where the lightning struck earlier. <laughs> Maybe lightning will strike, oops, <laughs> in the same place twice. I think a skeleton shot a creeper back there, apparently. Yeah, now I can tell that it changed back to a rainstorm, because now there's no new mobs spawning. I'm just kind of riding back and forth across the area, and now there's no new mobs over here. 
All right, so now it's just a rainstorm. We can't get any more lightning strikes. I don't see anybody with the boots. So we will continue on with other things for this episode. And given how frequent that the um, thunderstorms happen with the lightning strikes causing the skeletal horses, it's really kind of annoying that you get this thing where <laughs> the skeleton's actually riding on top of that horse, but he's rendered over here. Um, they changed the way that riding and passengers works in 1.9, and as you can maybe tell, it doesn't really work. <laughs> so, as usual, fix your game, Mojang. And I think it might be impossible to kill the skeleton riders when they don't render properly. Like, my client sees them over here, but the arrows will just bounce off of that, because it's like a phantom. And I guess I could kill the horse, and then I'd be able to kill the rider afterwards. Uh, but if you do see this, what you can do is you can just re-log. And so if I do this and I just go back into the world... Yeah, now the skeleton will actually be riding the horse, and so now I'll actually be able to shoot an arrow at him and kill him. Assuming I don't suck at the game, <laughs> which might be the wrong assumption. And since the thunderstorm just ended, I'm going to sleep in a bed tonight. Oops, alright, killed the horse. They make a crazy, like, death sound. Skeletons on fire in the daylight, I've also noticed. Prioritize trying to get undercover to going after you, and so occasionally you'll see there's a skeleton over there who raises his bow at me briefly, uh, but then puts it back down as he tries to run for cover. And so basically, if you see a skeleton who's on fire and he doesn't have any cover to get under, it's actually kind of safe just to go walk near the skeletons, because they're not going to be able to fire their arrows at you. At least in this version of the game, that's how their AI seems to behave. And so, I don't know, it seems like that could be a useful thing to know at some point. I was just running back out here after I slept in the bed to double check if there were any any guys with chainmail boots that I could get, but I didn't see any. I'm going to clean up the mess over here and then move on to some other things for this episode. You might have seen in my inventory earlier that I'd farmed up some gas tears in the nether, and that was so that we would be able to respawn the dragon again. Let's see if I can remember how this works. Is it like this? I think it's like that. Yeah. All right. Great. Another four ender crystals ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put away. Oh, I had a bunch of gas tears left over in there. I had no idea, and I had more eyes of ender in there as well. Okay. These are all useful things to realize about all the inventory that I have lying around. But yeah, I wanted to fight the dragon again, and I'll show you as we go over. Actually, I'll make a cut, and I'll meet you guys over at the end, and we'll check out what I have prepared for the dragon fight. I have seen some other dragon fighting farms that are pretty cool and effective, and there's all kinds of farms in Minecraft that you'll see on channels like Etho and DocM, where they, you know, you can spend 20 hours building this awesome thing that is going to be 100% efficient, and you guys probably know by now that that is not really my style. I would definitely prefer to spend one hour on something quick and dirty but effective, as opposed to 20 hours making something beautiful and 100% efficient and stuff like that. And so here is what I have done based on what we saw last time. Basically, right above each of the different pillars, I pillared up, I put a piece of end stone, I think like 12 or 16 blocks up from where the end crystal spawns, and then I have a piece of TNT over there, and since I have flame on my bow, I'm pretty sure if I just stand up here, I would be able to hit the TNT relatively easily, even though like some of the end pillars themselves kind of like make it hard to hit the actual end crystal and so i think i can fire and ignite all of these different pieces of tnt just from standing here and because it's end stone i don't think the dragon will be able to break this he might like hit me and possibly have enough knockback to knock me out of here but i think i could just stand here easily aim at and hit all the tnt the tnt would drop and destroy the end crystals and we'll be able to fight the dragon that way I think basically what I learned is that kind of 10 blocks out in each direction is what gets replaced with the end crystals, but there were a couple of things that I still wanted to check out. I've also been farming a bunch of endermen in here, as you might be able to guess, based on the number of uh, <laughs> ender pearls I have in my inventory, because they're very useful for getting around. But basically also over here, if the center is like here, then basically one, two, three blocks out brings us to this wall. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
I think basically when this pillar gets destroyed and replaced, all of this cobblestone will go away, but this last piece that's 11 blocks out will actually remain. I'm actually going to put one more out here, uh, just in case I was off by one with my counting. And so we're going to see if this cobblestone disappears, but this remains. And I'm also curious to see if it also replaces the end stone that's kind of in front of it. And so I'm also going to dig out a little trench in front of this just to see if the end stone that was originally here gets replaced or if it only replaces the obsidian. I'm not sure. But basically, I would like to respawn the dragon. I want to inspect the state of what's over here just to kind of verify some assumptions. And then I want to climb my little staircase that I think will be relatively protected from the dragon and knock back and different things. And see then if I can just kind of stand atop here and use my arrows to kind of take out all of the crystals really easily and then go finish off the dragon. That's, that's the plan for today, so we'll see how well things actually go according to plan. And before we respawn the dragon, I just remembered someone asked an interesting question last time that I was curious to know the answer to as well, which is what the dragon looks like when he is hit by spectral arrows. And so I want to grab some glowstone dust so I can make some spectral arrows. We can always get more glowstone in the nether if we need to. I think they just get made like two at a time or something. But let's do that. I've got arrows over here. Um, so we'll grab some more. Okay, I've got plenty of arrows in my inventory already. But if you don't know the recipe for spectral arrows, basically you can just surround them in glowstone dust like this and they get made two at a time. So that'll make me 12 spectral arrows. And I'm fairly certain that whatever's kind of first in your inventory is what the bow will consume. And so right now, if I fire the bow, it's just going to fire a normal arrow because this is first. But if I swap these around, then it would fire a spectral arrow. And so I'll be able to swap them later in order to actually fire the spectral arrow. Uh, but now let me go back to the end and we will fight the dragon and test out all these things. Okay, this time we're ready to go. So I will put one ender crystal on each of the four sides. I also want to see, I think it's like this one or maybe this one that goes first and then it goes clockwise. I want to see if it respawns them kind of in the same order. So let's try to inspect that as well. Yes, it is this one, and then it's going to go to this one. Yes, okay, cool. Then let's go over here and observe what happens right over here when we get to this one, okay. Interesting. Okay, it didn't replace any of the cobblestone at the base, so maybe it's only the top of the towers that actually gets replaced. I'm not sure exactly how that works. All right, I hear the dragon. <laughs> Don't know if you guys could hear that. But apparently there's a dragon in here somewhere. Ooh, some of this got replaced, I think. Okay, so let's see if I can manage to hit my TNT. I don't actually need to hit the TNT on all of these. Like, some of these I could just actually hit the crystal. But I'm... Ooh, great. <laughs> all right, but you did see the TNT does work there. And so I can also do a little bit of practicing from over here and see which ones are easy enough from this height to just... Ouch, 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 hey, you're mean. Um, oh, right, darn it. I did not think of this possibility. Right. All right, well, that makes things more annoying. All right, let's... Oops, darn it. <laughs> All right, that ender crystal I could just hit from up here. Well, this is good. I'm gaining... Oh, boy. Uh, can I do this? Darn it. Did not succeed at that. I am gaining some experience about what tactics work against the dragon and which don't. So maybe it would be useful to try to automate the TNT drops. I've seen people use dispensers, so you could stock up a whole lot of TNT and like put it in the dispenser and then just have the dispenser uh, drop it out at the right moment in time after the dragon respawns. So that's definitely like a possible thing that could be done. Okay, ah darn it, okay I'm inside the... his bad breath here. And this bad breath up here also... ah darn it, okay I'm taking a lot of damage here. So let's go elsewhere for a little bit. Um, hmm. Yeah, I did not bring glass bottles. And the bad breath does take a while to dissipate. Hey, dragon. So I guess... Alright, TNT above the caged ones definitely seems useful. Because I could, ought to be able to hit that. And that, maybe. 
Great, to blow up the cages and then maybe... I'm not sure if that blew up the... Here, let's watch this one. I think it blew up the crystal that was inside as well. The TNT dropped on the very top center of the cage. And I'm not going to bother fighting the dragon just yet. Because I think... Oh, boy. Come on, there's still all the breath. It takes a long time for the breath to dissipate. Up on my little stairwell thing over here. I think I still have more crystals I need to take out. Is the reason I'm not bothering to fight the dragon, because it'll just heal back up. So let's see if without my little staircase thingy, I can just manage to fire an arrow and hit some of my TNT. Th okay, I hit that one. Great. But some of these are too high for me to reach normally, I think. <laughs> Hmm. I could just pillar up since the dragon seems to be kind of just sitting around and just see if I can reach up high enough to get to where I'm trying to go to hit the last couple of pillars. Oh, now the dragon's flying away. Has any of the breath dissipated? Oh, darn it. I think I looked at an enderman too. Yeah, I definitely looked at an enderman. Let's be prepared to fight this one enderman. Hey, buddy. All right, there we go. And I think if I manage to get through one little patch of breath over here, the breath at the very top. Oh, this is dissipating now, too. Cool. All right, perfect timing. So now from up here, I think there's two more to try to take out. There's one there, and there's one there. All right, I hit that one. Ah, darn it. Ah, oh, and I almost hit that one. Yeah, I think from this height, actually, I can hit the ender crystals as easily as I can hit my own TNT. And so maybe the key is just having a good platform to stand in the middle where you can kind of aim at all the crystals. And that might be, like, sufficient. Okay, I think I've taken out all the crystals now. No, there's still a couple. There's one. And, oh, that's just my TNT. I think that's all of them now. Okay. So let's assume that we've taken out all the crystals. And then we can go after this dummy. Trying to get crits. Mostly to preserve my sword. The sword doesn't have unbreaking on it. Oh, crap. Ouch. And it's a very good sword. And I would like to hold on to it for as long as possible. Ah, darn it. Okay. Uh, oh, that was fortunate. <laughs> I was just about to switch to an ender pearl, And then I'm like, oh, I'm going to land in some water. I'll just sit here. Thank you. All right, where did the dragon go? If you lose eyes on the dragon, it can be dangerous. There we go. All right, he's throwing some breath at me. What a guy. All right, and the bow is very good, and so I would like to... Oh, now I have to hit him with spectral arrow. Right, right, right. We have more experiments. Uh, spectral arrows. I've got 12 of them. Let's make sure I hit him with at least one. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Oh, is there an... Ah, oh, darn it. There's Enderman after me. Hold on. Must deal with the Enderman threat. The dragon might come over here and beat up the Endermen and kind of save me from them. Oh boy, okay, yep, there we go. Ah, darn it, there's still one, two Endermen after me. I've also seen people, like, put a bunch of boats. Oh gosh, oh wow, okay, here's where we save ourselves. Alright, that is the first time in a long time that I've really been threatened with death here in Minecraft, because I nearly fell off the island there. Always have ender pearls on your bar. Okay. We're back in good shape, and the dragon... Okay, let's hit him with the spectral... Oh. Yeah, the arrow just bounces off. Okay. Once he starts flying, we'll try to hit him... Okay, there we go, with the spectral arrow. Oh, no! Did I use a spectral arrow? I'm definitely using spectral arrows. Did the dragon not light up? I think you can apply the glowing effect to the dragon, but maybe spectral arrows don't cause the dragon to light up. Ah, that's disappointing. All right, well, we did the experiment. So I'm happy to have done that. And I don't think he's healing anymore. So now hopefully I can just destroy the dragon pretty easily. Oh, oh boy. All right, can I land in some water here? No, not quite. Oh, I should have used my water pocket. That would have been smart. Could have landed in my own water bucket. 
All right, but we do have stakes. We're healing back up nicely. Stake is almost like a regen potion. We'll do as much damage as we can right now. And now let me see. I just want to try to hit him with another spectral arrow. Just to make sure I didn't somehow mistake what was going on there. Hey, dragon. I'm not doing a very good job with the arrows today. Okay, yeah, that was definitely a hit. And he does not start glowing when you hit him with spectral arrows. How disappointing. All right, I ought to be able to finish off the dragon here pretty easily now. And so, oh, okay, oh boy. Um, I should have, yeah, I should have landed on top of the pillar or gotten my water bucket out. Oh yeah, because now I'm in a bit of trouble. Okay. Let's keep the steak on the bar, ready to go. I'm gonna need to eat another one in just a minute to heal back up fully. There we go. All right. Now, Dragon, where have you gone? Did I look at this guy? I did look at one of these guys, I think. No, the Endermen are angry at the Dragon, not angry at Brian. Good good job, Enderman. That is the correct attitude to have. All right, where is the Dragon? Don't look at that Enderman. Do find Dragon. There he is. All right. Okay, Dragon down. I currently have 17 levels. I'm also curious to see how many levels the dragon gives you on subsequent kills. There are a lot of experience balls that fall down. And I went from 17 to, oh, it's still a fair amount of experience, 20 something. And there's probably some that has fallen back into uh, the overworld. And yeah, I guess the dragon destroyed some blocks over here. But interesting, I'll need to do a little bit more experiments with the base of the pillars, because the base of the pillars isn't replaced the same way as the top of the pillars, as far as I can tell. We did carve a hole through the pillars, and we saw that they got replaced, but maybe at the base uh, there's a smaller area that gets replaced as compared to the top where the end crystals actually spawn in. And... Yeah, I think that's everything I need to do here. So let's head back home. Let's see what time of day it is currently. It's the middle of the day. All right, let me clean up and decide what we want to do next. I do want to experiment with fishing a bit more, both for name tags and to possibly get a mending book. And so I believe, even with just 24 levels, I've at least got an unbreaking three over here, and oftentimes we'll get other enchants as well. And okay, that one just says unbreaking three. I did earlier, managed to enchant this fishing rod that has lure one, luck of the sea one, and unbreaking two. And I want to get a sense of just how effective something like that is for getting some treasure. And so I'm going to do a little bit of fishing for, yeah, we got like five minutes for the rest of the day, just to get a sense of how quickly I catch fish and how much treasure I managed to get. And so I'll see you guys in a bit. It's important, by the way, to have the bobber visible to sunlight, the glass and up here, I believe shouldn't change it, um, but you will catch fish more quickly if it's directly exposed to sunlight or moonlight, whatever body of water that you're fishing in that the bobber is sitting in. The sun is just going down now, and so I guess I've probably been fishing for about five minutes, and I'd also done some fishing off camera before the start of this episode. I'll show you what I caught in the chest here in a moment. But I've managed to catch a number of things in just a few minutes' time. I know you can make auto-fishing farms, but once again, I'm just interested in what you can do manually. And I don't have a great fishing rod yet, but it's still the case that I have managed to catch. <laughs> Hoping to catch one more thing, and then I'll show you. Here, fishy, 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 fishy. You can do it. I just came on camera, and now you're taking the longest possible time. There we go. I managed to catch a pufferfish. Seven raw fish, a clownfish, an ink sack, a saddle apparently, which is actually kind of nice, uh, and some salmon. And I believe those are all the things that I managed to catch. So a saddle is a treasure item, but I also uh, earlier caught a Protection 3 Depth Strider 3 book, and occasionally you get awesome enchanting books. And so those are in there. I'm going to put my fishing rods away, and since it is nighttime now, 
I suppose we can do one more night of Boots Patrol, trying to get our chainmail boots. And so I will grab one of the faster horses. I think this guy's pretty fast. Start running around looking for guys wearing chainmail boots and bring you guys back as I find anybody cool. So many mobs, none of them wearing boots. What's up with this? Well, it seems like tonight just was not a lucky night as far as boots patrol goes. I don't think I saw any mobs wearing any chainmail armor at all. It seems like I saw fewer mobs around. And so I might have just gotten a little <laughs> a little too used to the benefits of having the thunderstorm. Uh, when you don't have the thunderstorm condition, there's just not as many mobs spawning. Yeah, so just to re-verify, all we have left to get is the chain boots and the mob heads. I thought that was the case, but I do have a really poor memory, and so I wanted to double check. And we did some science in the end. Uh, there's probably still some more things that we could do. But basically, I'm just kind of curious about kind of interesting, clever ways to re-kill the dragon, but we had some success and some fun there as well. So with that, I will say, I hope as always, that you guys are having a great day, and I will see you again soon with more Minecraft exploration and tactics. If you have any other clever suggestions for ways that I could try to get these final items, other than just kind of the completely standard ways, by all means, let me know, and I will see you when I see you. Bye-bye.